I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? They're all over the damn place. They're in our midst and they are family. We're related to them because they were the ones that had a hand in establishing us as a hybrid race a hundred thousand years ago. And that hybridization is still underway, it's still happening, even as we sit here and speak. It hasn't stopped. It's underway. They have different agendas. Some of them are nice folks and some of them are not. As I said, they have different agendas. But they're all around. The one in the upper left-hand corner there is another self-luminous object that moves all over the place. That object is over 2,000 miles long. It is an artificially constructed object over 2,000 miles long. It's about 500 miles in diameter. Can you imagine a technology and a society that can build an object 2,000 miles long for 500 miles in diameter? Oh, this, this is an object that flew up and knocked the Soviet satellite out of orbit some years ago. The Soviets sent up a damn first-rate satellite. No one believed me, even from those few people that I, I was able to share this experience with, uh, that this is true, but luckily with the development of the ufology and many great people out there that are doing the research and providing the video evidence, so as you can see, this is on infrared, that is why his black and white is from STS-63, uh, sorry, and they are trying to locate the Mir space station. They cannot locate the Mir space station because more than 100 objects are appearing and disappearing from the radar. Those are the same type of craft that I observed on the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. And those are those balls of light that I was observing in those times as you can see clearly, creating an intelligent formation. And they wanted to take pictures of one of the moons. They wanted to take pictures of Phobos, one of the two moons of Mars. And while they were taking pictures, this object comes up from the surface of Mars, bumps the Soviet Phobos satellite, knocks it out of orbit, and it crashes. Next picture, please. What you see there is a picture of Phobos, the, the, the moon, and I mean artificial moon of Mars, and below it you see an object that the Soviets said measured roughly 15 kilometers in length. An artificial object near Phobos, the moon, 15 kilometers in length. Next, next picture, please. That's the moon, 12 miles in diameter. The Soviets planned to land on it. Well, someone else said, no, you're not going to do that. But that is a picture of Phobos, which they've all concluded is an artificial satellite. This photograph was taken by your own NASA Apollo 13 guys on their, <clears throat> their, their trip to the moon. It didn't work out too well. And many of you may have heard rumors about the story, but Apollo 13 <clears throat> had a small nuclear device aboard. And they had been told by the guys that ran NASA that they were going to land on the surface, going to place this small nuclear device. And then when they all left and came back aboard and came back, they were going to detonate it and study the reverberations of this nuclear device, study the seismology of the moon, because they've been convinced for some years that the moon is basically hollow. It appears to be somewhat of an artificial satellite. Well, they plan to develop, de detonate this nuclear device, and then the others said, no, no, you're not going to do that. Uh, we'll get back to that picture again, please. All right. The object you see there in the middle, <clears throat> over 2,000 miles long. It's an artificial, I assume metallic object, probably crammed with guys. And that object followed our Apollo 13 all the way to the moon, around and back. 
Now, whether they were trying to make sure the Apollo 13 guys got home safely or what, whether they were the ones responsible for Apollo 13's little accident, which kept them from landing on the moon and placing that nuclear device, who knows, we may find out someday. But here you have an artificial object in orbit. Now I've spent some time aboard aircraft carriers with my kid. We have carriers with 5,000 men in the crew. 1,000 feet long, 150 aircraft, and you know, there's snack bars, dining rooms, accommodations, this and that. Can you imagine the accommodations on an object over 2,000 miles long. Next slide, it's the second photograph. Uh, same objects, but a second photo in the sequence. That's the big mother, and I, I use that, no, no pun intended. There are other objects out there. There's, there's a disc-shaped object, and then there's the other object. Then above it is the moon out there. But there's that one big object out there. I'm sure they got a crew of hundreds, maybe a couple of thousand the ones I refer to as the others. I hate the term alien, I hate the term UFO. There are no UFOs. We've known what they are for years and years and years. Some of them are ours, some of them are theirs. There's no unidentified flying objects out there. They're all identified. I've tried to impress upon you the seriousness of it, the seriousness of the cover-up and the lies they've been telling you the importance of why you need to know as much as you can know. And you need to be presented with the material because, damn it, you all deserve the truth. You have a right to know and you have a need to know because you are the people that this whole damn thing is all about.